video games. You expect your parents, at, at least when you're at an, a younger age, they'll tell you, you can't play Call of Duty, you can't play Halo because they're violent. But what actually happens when people play violent games? Believe it or not, 75% of parents believe that when their kids play a violent video game, they will enact violent crimes out in the real world. But that's not always entirely true. My points of interest today will be the benefits of gaming itself, real life events associated with video games, and what good can actually come from them, and the common misconceptions and stereotypes that gamers and people playing games get. The benefits of gaming are quite many. It can improve hand-eye coordination, problem-solving skills, <coughs> enhanced memory, concentration, attention span, and social skills, the brain and the brain speed, and multitasking. It can also be educational. Many YouTube channels actually dig into the lore and many things associated with video games that you not normally would learn on the surface of playing that game. Game Theory, one of my favorite channels, actually dives into special and certain games that have secrets that you normally wouldn't know about. They have videos such as Crapper Cash, how in real life, if an apocalypse would happen, would the bottle cap actually be worth a valuable currency? And if Rick is actually the same person as somebody else, which you never know. Now into my second topic, real life events that are associated with gaming and crimes that could have been committed by gamers. Adam Lanza, you might know him as the Sandy Hook elementary shooter, but was that related to video games? I don't think it was. In fact, he actually had social problems going on. Even though he played video games, that's what they blamed it on. But they never really looked into his actual life. Eric Harris and Dylan Klebold, they were Columbine. They were friends that liked to play Doom, which is probably one of the most violent video games of that time. But just because they played Doom, does that make them criminals? Many people like to play violent video games, but that doesn't necessarily make them bad. Yes, it desensitizes them, but that's not always a bad thing. Medical careers actually want you to be desensitized to blood and certain things, so that way you don't get squeamish when doing your job. Evan Ramsey. He shot up Bethanol Regional High School which wasn't even relating to video games. He only played Call of Duty a couple times, but when saying that, they believed that that was all he did. Of course, when his parents took it away, he got pretty angry. Nathan Brooks, almost the same deal, except when they took away his video games, he almost killed his parents. Luckily, they survived. But the math, it's crazy. The US population is 323.1 million. Divide it by 100 to get 1% of the population, but if you look it up, 42% of America's population plays video games at least over three hours a week. From 2013 to now, there's only been 285 school shootings relating to video games. But it's almost one and half a million if you break it down. One and half a million. That is people that play violent video games and people that will end up shooting up a school. That's one and half a million. That's not many. So to say that every gamer, or at least people that play violent video games, will commit violent crimes, that's mathematically inaccurate. You cannot say somebody will create or commit a violent crime if they simply don't have what it takes. They all tend to have psychopath tendencies. 
that's what makes them have them crimes, their lack of empathy. Without that, they're just normal people playing violent video games. To my third point, common misconceptions and stereotypes that gamers get. The availability of video games causes an epidemic of crimes and violence. That's not always true. It's actually quite the opposite. Instead of gamers creating violence that they normally would, they're getting their anger out by playing these video games. These video games lets them get rid of their anger. So that way they can go into the real world and be okay. Scientific evidence proves and links violent crimes to video games. Most of that is just articles that believe they might have been crimes committed from gamers because they all happen to play the same video games, but they're just popular video games. They were all either unended or untested or theories that were never actually proved, but said they were proved so that way gamers could not be playing violent video games to have the outcome that 75% of parents want. Because video games are used to train to kill soldiers, they have the same impact on society itself. That's not always true. Because as I, as I said earlier, the medical field, they want you to be desensitized. So when you see blood, it doesn't bother you. It's not necessarily a bad thing to be desensitized to those kinds of things. As a matter of fact, socially, being experienced with those kind of people that you meet online, it, you actually benefit socially. So that way, when you're in the real world, you're not as quote unquote antisocial as most gamers are said to be. Almost no girls play video games. Of course, some of you gamers might know this, but it's quite the opposite. It's almost split 50-50. Just certain girls play more games than other men play others. But you never know until you actually talk to them. It's almost 50-50 split. Video games are not a meaningful form of expression. Now, this one might be a little bit difficult, but Video games can be a great form of expression. Any tall tale game, they have emotional breakdowns that make you have a breakdown and they have sad moments that you would never experience without playing the game. Such games as um, Tall Tales, all of them, and Life is Strange, if you've played it, it's not that easy to get through. To recap, the benefits of gaming and how you can benefit mentally and physically from playing them. Real life events associated with video games and the common misconceptions about video games that stereotypes might be having. So that's it for today, folks. Game over.